Hey everybody, Brett from Astartes Gaming here, back with uh, some more Mountain Blade 2 Bannerlord uh, coverage, I guess. And so, Gamescom's been over for a while. There is a very comprehensive post on the uh, Tale World forums that basically has compiled everything uh, that came out of Gamescom regarding Bannerlord. So, uh, I've got some requests to cover information in this. Today, I'm only going to be looking at the troop trees, but there is other stuff in here that I would like to cover. Uh, I actually, at one point, sat down and started recording a video trying to do all of it, and there's just too much here to cover all in one go. So, uh, I'm going to do it piece by piece. If there's anything in particular you guys would like to see first, let me know. Since troop trees were the first specific request I got, that's what I'm going to hit on here today. Uh, and I'll try to keep this moderately length. I'm going to shoot for a little less than 20 minutes, but we'll see how that goes. So uh, as you can see, there's um, a lot of different streams from uh, the demo that people were able to play that you can check out. Uh, there is all of the factions and whatnot. So for example, you can see the Northern Empire, who their leader is. We already know it's Lucan. Uh, the clans within there and then who they start out at war with. So I'll probably do a video at some point on this discussing the initial wars and what I think of them. Uh, there's more information about the minor factions and who's involved in those. And let's see, all the various skills in detail, uh, game concepts, these are from the encyclopedia. Some of these are probably not worth going into much detail about, but some of them, uh, this is the first explanation we've really got in regard to them, so that might be worth checking out. Uh, there's also some information on perks. I'm probably not going to cover this because it is not comprehensive, and to cover it in a comprehensive way would be ridiculous. So, yeah, frankly, probably not going to bother. And then there's other information as well that might be worth compiling a video for. But anyways, uh, before I spend too much time talking about that, let's get into this. So, the Valandian Troop Tree. We'll start with them first. So, uh, they're going to be very similar to the Swadians in terms of style. And you can kind of see that reflected in their troop tree, although it is expanded from the Swadian troop tree. And it does kind of uh, merge the Rodox crossbowmen in as well. Uh, so they start out with recruits, and then we go into either cavalry or infantry right out of the gate. So obviously they're very cavalry focused. And within cavalry, there's effectively two different paths. Uh, there is the path to the left where they go into the Valandian Squire or the path to the right, the Valandian Scout. Uh, it looks to me as though the path to the left is going to be more shock cav. Uh, not to say that they wouldn't be well suited to sustain combat, but these are going to be your uh, eventually your knights on horseback. Why did I say on horseback? Obviously they're on horseback. Uh, your knights on horseback with lance is probably the more important thing there. So, uh, again, shot cavalry, it's going to hit hard. Uh, couch lances are going to tear through stuff very, very quickly. Uh, but, you know, you probably kind of want to send them in and then maybe pull them back. Whereas, uh, we have the Vlandian vanguard over here and then the veteran vanguard that look to be armed with uh, just a shield. And some sort of one-handed weapon, it's impossible to tell from here, but it's probably either a sword or a mace. Maybe an axe, but an axe typically isn't a weapon used from horseback for the most part. There are obviously exceptions to that, but uh, frequently you'll see swords and maces throughout history. There are some instances of axes as well, but less so. But, you know, some one-handed weapon, and I think these are going to be the cavalry that uh, fight more like infantry. I guess, so you could send these guys in and just kind of let them run amok, not have to worry about uh, getting the best charge off with them because they're going to be better suited to sustain combat. But I'm just basing that off their loadouts and not any statistics that we've seen. Anyways, moving on, we have the infantry side of the tree. Uh, and from the footman, it splits off into either melee or ranged. So on the melee side, we have the infantrymen, the veteran infantrymen, and then either a sergeant or a pikeman. Now, unless they've really, really overhauled uh, pole arms, which I, I really hope that they have, because pole arms were marginal at best in Warband. 
depending on what you were playing. There were some mods that did pull arms quite well, but in vanilla they were terrible. So, if that's still the case, obviously the sergeant's the way to go. But if pull arms are, you know, much more effective in Bannerlord, which I'm willing to bet that they are because they've improved just about every other aspect of the game, I think having a really nice mass of pikemen to make up your, you know, front center is going to be pretty useful against dealing with enemy cav. So I think these guys will have a place in uh, Vlandian armies. I think if I were to play the Vlandians myself, what I would do is probably uh, do, you know, again, a, a good mass of pikemen in the center of the, you know, the front of my formation. Uh, and then on either flank, I think I'd put some of the sword infantry, so like the Vlandian veterans and the, the sergeants. And then, uh, if this were total war, I'd be deploying the ranged troops in front, but it's, it's you know, mountain blades, so I'm going to have them in the back. Uh, obviously, the crossbows behind them, and then the cavalry, uh, maybe some knights off to one flank and the veteran vanguards, you know, off-wide on the other. But I think that would be, uh, overall, a pretty effective army, and it seems like they've got most of their bases covered. Okay, so, uh, Vlandians, again, not too much new there other than the division of cavalry if this were the swadians again they just have the one tree and i think it only went you couldn't get cavalry right out of the gate first of all you had to get it from the infantry tree but it didn't go this deep either okay imperial troop tree and this is for all the different parts of the empire so there is no east or north or south or west or whatever uh, it's just Imperial troops. They start out with recruits, which, you know, of course, everybody does. And rather than going um, infantry, cavalry, here they're going melee and ranged out of the gate. From the infantry tree, they split into cavalry versus infantry. And it looks like they've done that because there is cavalry on both sides. So there's also cavalry on the ranged side that are mounted archers. So that kind of makes sense. Anyways, uh, we'll stay to the left first. From the infantrymen, we go either horsemen or trained infantrymen. Uh, on the horsemen side, it looks like, and unfortunately this is cut off, but that says Imperial Heavy Horsemen right there, and then Cataphract under it. Uh, and then we have Equite, which just means Cavalry in Latin, basically, and Clibinari. So... I find this division interesting because Cataphracts and Clibinari are fairly similar, um, and I, I'm probably going to regret saying that because um, there are distinctions and somebody's going to definitely hammer on them in the comments. But uh, I do find that kind of weird that they made this distinction in game because there's other very Roman, well, not Roman, very like Byzantine cavalry units that you could potentially pull from that would be a little bit more distinctive from one another than these two. Uh, but essentially, with either of these units, you have really heavy cavalry. Um, the horse is completely covered in, like, mail or um, scale armor. The rider also covered head to toe completely in armor. And in either case, you have a very long lance. With the Clibinari, I think generally you have a bow as well, but it's sort of meant to just harass the enemy a little bit before charging in. In uh, some cataphract units, you would see bows as well, but typically not in Byzantine or Roman ones. That was more of a Persian thing. Persian cataphracts would carry bows. Uh, I don't know of any instance of like Roman ones doing it. So anyways, um, that's sort of the minor distinction there. Uh, and then we get into the melee infantry part, uh, which is fairly straightforward. You just have... It looks like they're carrying swords. Yeah, I'm willing to bet that this indicates that they're carrying swords as well, although that could just denote melee infantry. It might not actually specify the weapon type. In fact, let's refer back to this. Uh, yeah, so even the pikemen have a sword, so it's not not specifying the weapon type. And 
Uh, we start with infantrymen, we go to trained, and then veteran, and then we end with the legionaries, who are going to be their elite melee force. Not as much melee infantry diversity here, so they don't have, uh, like, pikes, which is interesting because, you know, the, the Byzantines had the Manalo toy pikes, because um, there was a lot of pike tradition in that area from the uh, Macedonians. But uh, no pikes for them, or spears for that matter, it looks like. It looks like it's all swords. So they might have a harder time dealing with cavalry charges, but they have some pretty good cavalry of their own to counter it with. Uh, and then they are going to be using archers, not crossbows, like the uh, Vlandians, which, did I even touch on them? I mean, it's it's basically exactly the Rodox ranged units. So, yeah, nothing really new there. Uh, anyways, Imperial Bowmen, Imperial Archers, and Imperial Heavy Archers. And then we have Horse Archers, Veteran Horse Archers, and Bukalari, which I'm not too familiar with. But anyways, they're going to be the heavy horse archers. And it looks like, at least in the latter two cases, they're carrying a shield and a polearm. Probably uh, just a thrusting spear, likely not a lance. And then for the regular Imperial horse archer, if there is a shield, it's significantly smaller. I don't see one, though. Uh, and they are carrying a polearm as well. So, again, less diversity in the infantry but a lot of cavalry to play with there. Uh, now we get into the Kuzates, the, the real horse lords, who actually have less cavalry to choose from, interestingly enough, unless there's part of the tree that we're missing. They're also going to go straight from their recruit unit into... Oh, actually, this is kind of new. Um, either mounted archers or regular archers. Strange. Yeah, I'm wondering if we're missing part of this tree. No, because there's there's melee infantry here, uh, and then there's melee cavalry there. So I guess this is it. On the cavalry side, it looks like uh, we have raiders, lancers, and heavy lancers for the melee troops. So they're going to be focused more on shot cavalry, it looks like. Uh, the lancers are going to be more of a hit-and-run style than they are a sustained fighting style uh, type of cavalry. And then, of course, the horse archers, um, and then they have some pretty beefy-looking horse archers down here, but otherwise, this is essentially the same types of units that we saw with the Empire, although these guys are not carrying pole arms that I can tell, although he might be up here. It's difficult to see what that is on his back. It very well could be a pole arm. No shields, as far as I can see, though, uh, and so these are likely carrying just a sword or something, to that effect and then this guy is probably gonna have a pole arm or some very basic type of sword on the infantry side they go straight into archers which is very interesting so these guys are gonna have a lot of difficulty with their lower tier units in terms of taking and holding ground because they're not gonna be able to stand and fight they're gonna always have to be moving at least until they get into the the more elite tiers so uh, they have spearmen, veteran spearmen, and then either guards or Tarkins. And interesting, these look like swords. They don't look like spears. Unless it's just a very long blade on that spear or point on that spear, which is possible. There are some spears with very elongated tips, but... Uh, that's besides the point. They're called spearmen. Let's just assume they have spears. These guys have shields so big you can't even see their faces. That might get in the way in combat for them. But they look to be a spear unit as well. Just basing it off whatever weapon these guys are holding. It looks to be the same one. The guard, I can't tell what he's carrying. It's clipping through his shield though. So I'm willing to bet these portraits aren't final. <laughs> uh, he's also not wearing a helmet. Uh, that's probably a bad idea for an elite unit, but uh, there we go. Very difficult to make out any more on these two, given how large their shields are. But they have two choices of elite infantry, melee infantry, that is. Um, I'm willing to bet one is more defensive and one is more offensive, but uh, it's hard to say with what we can see here. Then, of course, we have their archers. Uh, pretty straightforward there. All right, so uh, moving on, we have the Sturgeons who, uh, again, for those people that are constantly complaining that there's no Nords in this game, 
this is going to be the closest thing to it for or to them for you. Uh, so, whoops. They start with volunteers, and we go into footmen and skirmishers, so melee infantry or ranged infantry. And that's a very interesting division that they've chosen there. We can't see what this is, which is a real shame. Yeah, that's a bummer. Is it on any of these? And they got the whole tree over here, even though they had to cut it. Wait, why is there two different ones? That's odd. Anyway, uh, let's not move on to those yet. Unfortunately, yeah, we can't see what's over here. I'm willing to bet that this is going to be their sort of more vanilla infantry. We don't see any units in here with, like, large shields. And that is... Uh, large round shields. And that's one of the hallmarks of this faction. So I would be willing to bet that these three units are just increasing quality uh, like sword shield infantry, potentially axe and shield infantry, but definitely large round shields. Uh, then on the opposite side of that, we have what looks to be more like shock infantry. So Sturgeon Warrior Sons, Huskarls, Huskarls Swords Guard, and Mounted Huskarls. Uh, all with what looks like very large two-handed weapons. So these guys are going to be the ones you don't hold ground with. These are going to be the ones that you kind of break formations with. Then we get to the range side. And again, I said this was weird because, first of all, they have mounted Huskarls duplicated, which I don't know why you would have that. Also, this starts off ranged, and then it splits off into what looks to be, like, shock cavalry. These are all pole-armed -arm, cavalrymen, which they look long enough to potentially be lances, but given that this faction is based on the Kievan Rus, uh, Rus, Kievan Rus um, I don't know that that would be... Uh, given the time period, maybe. Yeah, maybe. Uh, but then otherwise they have, you know, very basic archers. Finally, uh, well not finally, moving on, uh, we have the Asurai. The very, you know, Arab faction. From slave soldiers, into trainee slave soldiers, into seasoned slave soldiers. And then we have the Mamluks and the Ghazal or Ghazi, I can't quite read that. What's kind of interesting here is that they go into two different melee infantry troops. Uh, obviously, this is laying very heavily into the, the slave soldier route because Mamluks were famously slave soldiers. But uh, it looks like you can choose between slaves or free men. And if you go free men, we get the tribesmen who then split into either infantry or skirmishers, so melee or ranged. From there, uh, the infantry turn into swordsmen, which can then become cavalry. So, no elite infantry for them. No elite infantry. Very large amounts of uh, elite cavalry, though. Uh, on the range side, they go into either uh, more cavalry or archers and finally the master archers these tribal horsemen look just kind of like generic cavalry um, some sort of pole arm probably some throwing weapons but overall just kind of a default you know light cavalry unit that can kind of skirmish and fight but isn't going to be great in any one thing and then we have the farsa or farisa i can't tell again if these are i's or l's uh, but that is uh, a mounted archer unit. So you can see a shield in the left hand also kind of gripping a bow and so that's going to be like your elite range cavalry. These guys are going to be, well this will probably be your elite melee cavalry. Maybe more down the shock side than the, the sustained combat side but yeah either way you have two two melee cav units that are sort of at the top tier and then one ranged and then uh, a ranged infantry unit. So very cavalry heavy this army, although you don't get there until much later as opposed to like the Imperials get cavalry quite early. 
Uh, the Vlandians get it very early. But I guess they're more back-end heavy here. And finally, have the Batanians. And these are this is one of the factions I've been very excited about. So they start with the Klansmen. And then we either get into the Footmen or the Wilds. From there, uh, the Footmen split into either melee infantry or ranged infantry. The melee infantry further divides into cavalry or, you know, better infantry. So we have scouts and then horsemen. It looks like these guys are not going to have very good cavalry. Uh, and then their melee troops are spearmen. Are we seeing anything different down here? Uh, it looks like we are, actually. It's very strange. So here, this splits into cavalry and spears. Here, it splits into spears and, uh, like, sword infantry, from the looks of it. I wonder... Yeah, so over here, the cavalry's on that part. I I'm very curious what's going on here. Is this just two different... Hmm. Yeah, not sure what to make of that, to be honest. Over here, though, uh, these look to be various, like, kind of all over the place, to be honest. This looks like sort of a berserker-type unit. He's not wearing any armor. He's got a helmet, but no torso covering whatsoever. Uh, this is a ranged unit, but it's carrying a melee weapon. Here is a more advanced version of that unit, which looks to be wearing the same armor, but different helmet, or no helmet versus helmet, and then looks to be carrying a pole arm or a very large bow, and then further divides into two different archer units, neither of which I can really distinguish other than what they're wearing on their head. So I wonder if this is like a very incomplete tree here. Because it looks like it's kind of all over the place. It was sort of going range, but there's like a melee infantry unit in there. Very strange. Very strange. Uh, let's focus on this one, because this one's a little bit more clear cut. So, from the clansmen, instead of wilds, they go either footmen or cavalry. So, you know, infantry or cavalry. Footmen further divide into infantry or... Melee infantry or ranged infantry, which uh, they do here as well. But the melee infantry here just turn into two different types of melee infantry. So either spear armed or sword armed. Uh, what's interesting is that in some of the earlier gameplay footage, they had Falksmen. Uh, Falks being sort of like a curved, almost hooked blade that uh, was very commonly used by the Dacians and to an extent the Thracians against the Romans around that time period and at some point they had Falksmen in this troop tree and it looks like they've been removed because they were actually called Falksmen and we don't see any reference to that name or weapon here I don't see it depicted anywhere although it's very difficult again to determine what these guys are carrying uh we get into the archer tree. This faction is supposed to have the best archers in the game uh, with their very good longbowmen. But I'm willing to bet that the Asurai master archers might give them a run for their money. These guys will probably hit harder. Of course, they have you know the really heavy longbows, which will deal more damage. But these guys will probably put out a lot more shots. So it, it's probably going to come down to whether you want, like, rapid fire or, um, so, like, submachine gun or uh, sniper rifle, basically, is the best way to summarize that, I suppose. Uh, so, yeah, there's their archers, and then obviously the cavalry over here is the same cavalry we saw there, just uh, apparently much earlier in the tree. So, yeah, I'm, I'm not sure what's going on with that, to be honest. I wonder if maybe these are only accessible given a certain situation. Or maybe this is like a troop tree that's only accessible to the, the minor factions within the Batanians. It's difficult to say. Obviously, we don't have any context for this. But that is the different troop trees. So, 
I'm I'm pretty interested in all the factions. Interested in all the factions. Um, I've never been a big big fan of the Serenids, and these guys don't seem to be doing a whole lot different. So I'll probably give the Asurai a pass. Um, and I've never been a big fan of horse archers either, and so having a, an army more or less dependent on that doesn't appeal to me much either. Uh, but I never played the the Kurgits or Kur whatever you want to pronounce that as. I always say Kurgi, but that's definitely not the way most people pronounce it. So I've been trying to say Kurgit, but I don't know if that's how most people pronounce it either. It's one of those things that you see written all the time, but you don't often hear anybody pronounce it, so... I just kind of made up my own. But yeah, not a fan of them, so I doubt I'll be a fan here. Right now, I'm most excited for probably the Volandians and the Batanians. Uh, I really liked playing a Swati. A Swati is my favorite vanilla faction. And uh, this seems to be just sort of a better version of their existing troop tree. Like, you take Rodox, who had just absolutely deadly crossbowmen and then you take Swadia that had just absolutely deadly cavalry and solid infantry and put them together into a single troop tree and then add some pikemen on top of that to counter enemy cavalry and then you have a very very well-rounded troop tree here so I think these guys will be a lot of fun to play as especially fielding like a very large combined arms force uh, with the Batanians, obviously they're very focused on archers, especially if you're working with this troop tree. Again, I'm not sure when that is. But they have three elite longbow units from the looks of it. We don't know if this is longbow, but it certainly looks like he's carrying one. It looks like the exact same bow that these guys have. So potentially three different longbow units. Their cavalry is very minimal. So not going to do you a whole lot of good countering other factions cavalry in fact they're probably the worst in terms of cavalry uh, but they do have some interesting infantry as well and the option to go spears or swords so with these guys I would imagine you know probably running spears in the middle of your front line and some swords flanking that uh, and then maybe a little bit of light cavalry out to either side and then a whole lot of longbowmen behind them just raining death on the enemy uh, and then if I had to pick a third faction it would probably come down to either the Imperials or the Sturgeons obviously those are the only two left uh, I am definitely excited about playing as the Empire I want to take a couple attempts at it uh, maybe restoring it from within or uh, maybe starting within and then overthrowing it to become Emperor but I, I would like to maybe just kind of be a regular lord within it just trying to you know keep things going as well I think both of those play styles would be fun in one of the imperial factions and they certainly have a very I don't know if well-rounded is quite the right, right word I, I guess because they do have a good variety of cavalry um, it's unfortunate that their infantry is a bit limited but I guess with that much cavalry it would kind of be unfair uh, but they do have legionaries, which are probably going to be one of the better melee infantry units in the game. So it's not that they're bad, it's just that you don't have options. And then with the Sturgeons, uh, it looks like they're going to have a ton of infantry options. So if infantry is more your style, you probably favor these guys over the Empire. Uh, not so much in terms of cavalry, but they do certainly have more than the Batanians. So they'll be better in that regard, at least. And... Their archers are probably going to be decent. They look to be longbowmen down here. That looks like a longbow. That looks like a like a regular um, recurve bow. And this looks like a longbow again. So, yeah, I'm sure they'll pack a punch. All right, well, that's going to do it. Um, I went way over what I intended to, but there was a lot to cover there and a lot to speculate on as well. So hopefully we see more of this because, you know, I, I would really like more information on especially what's going on with the Batanians there. But uh, if you guys have any further information that you've found, uh, feel free to let me know and I can sort of amend this. But otherwise, thank you so much for watching. Oh, wait, one, one, one last thing. Don't forget to let me know what other stuff you'd like me to cover in a video here because I'm going to do them individually. I'm not going to lump them together. 
So thank you so much for watching. I had a great time talking about some Bannerlord with you, and I look forward to seeing you guys back here for my next video.